All right. So here are four sequences. Um, we want to decide if these are monotone increasing, monotone decreasing, because we're interested in whether we can apply this theorem we've just discussed, right? Um, we have a theorem that says that every bounded monotone sequence converges. And so if we can identify when a sequence is bounded and monotone, well, then we have a very powerful tool for determining convergence of a sequence. Um, so let's look at these. The first one's pretty straightforward. Um, we might notice that n plus 1 over n can be written as 1 plus 1 over n. And it's also pretty clear that the this is going to be decreasing, right? Because as n gets bigger, 1 over n gets smaller. Um, and so this is going to be going to be decreasing. Well, maybe that's not a very watertight argument. You know, it, it's essentially appealing to the fact that these terms lie on the graph y is 1 over x. We know that that's decreasing, so we go with it, right? Uh, now, there's a couple of ways that you could actually establish this, right? So one way you could establish this is we could say, well, you know, if I let f of x equal 1 plus 1 over n, or I guess it should be x now, sorry, right? So, so our sequence is just the values of f of x when we, rest when we restrict the domain to the, uh, to the natural numbers. Uh, but we know that the derivative of this thing is minus 1 over x squared, which is less than 0 if x is bigger than 1, bigger than or equal to 1. I mean, it's less than 0 for every x, but in particular for x less than or equal to 1. And so that certainly establishes that this is a decreasing sequence. Uh, the, other, the other way you can do it is you can consider the difference, a n plus 1 minus a n. Okay? If our sequence is decreasing, then this term should be smaller than that term, so this difference should be negative. So we can try to show that that difference is negative. Um, you can go ahead and try it, but we'll do it in the next one, right? Uh, it is done in the book. If you want to look in the book, you can go through how to, how to do it that way. Um, we'll apply it in the next one because we've got four examples to get through, and we don't want this video to get too long. Okay, so how about the next one? Um, we could once again kind of use this function argument here, but we could just go ahead and do it, right? So this time there's not a nice simplification, but we can say, well, what do we get? if we do b n plus 1 minus b n. Okay, what does that look like? Well, we're going to have n plus 1 squared over n plus 2 subtract n squared over n plus 1. And we'd like to get a common denominator for that. So we're going to get uh, n plus 1 cubed minus n squared times n plus 2 over n plus 1, n plus 2. And well, now we've got to multiply this all out. Um, n cubed plus 3, n squared plus 3, n plus 1, using binomial theorem, minus n cubed minus 2n squared over n plus 1, n plus 2. And so we take a look at this and we say, all right, that cancels with that. Um, 2n squared, that cancels with two of those. 3 leaves you with 1. And OK, so we have n squared plus 3n plus 1, n plus 1, n plus 2. That's positive, okay, because n is positive. And so now we know that this particular sequence here is increasing, right? Because the difference is positive. Good. One decreasing, one increasing, we can go to the next one. So the next one actually, 
you know, it's, it's going to bounce around on you initially, you might find, if you start plotting some of the values. Um, textbook does that for you. All right, we can consider, you know, if n is equal to zero, what do we get, right? We sort of start writing out the terms in the sequence. When n is equal to zero, we have minus 9 over, over 26. When n is equal to 1, we have minus 8 over, what are we going to get, um, 17, right? n is equal to 2, we have minus 5 over 2, right? n is equal to 0, we get 0, right? and so on. We can start plotting these and sort of play around and see where they go. Um, and it's kind of hard to tell looking at those values to figure it out. Uh, we can do this sort of difference method again. The textbook does that for you. It's, it's a big mess, though. Um, you might want to sort of analyze the, the two polynomials in n that you see here, see if you can get anything out of that. You might want to, for example, um, well, the top we can factor. I don't know if that helps us at all, but we can factor it. Um, the bottom. Uh, let's see, the bottom we could complete the square, n minus 5 squared plus 1. Well, it's never 0, that's good news. You can play around with that, you can, you can do this difference, but it's, it's, going, to be, it's going to be ugly. Um, so maybe we do want to look at this one from the point of view of a function. We say, okay, let's consider, let's consider f of x to be x squared minus 9, or x squared minus 10x plus 26. What's the derivative? f prime is going to be 2x times x squared minus 10x plus 26. Good little quotient rule. OK. Subtract x squared minus 9 times 2x minus 10. Whole thing over x squared minus 10x plus 26 all squared. OK, let me clean that up, give myself a bit more room. f prime of x, so I've got 2x cubed minus 20x squared plus 52x minus 2x cubed from here. And then I've got. Uh, minus 10x squared minus plus 10x squared. Um, minus 18x plus becomes plus 18x. Um, and then minus 90. Well, that's a mess. But you know what? It's, it's actually OK. It's not, it's not as bad of a mess as you might think. We look for cancellations again. And cancel there. We can cancel there. Um, this was 10. That adds up. So we get, and then that's going to be 70, right? So we get on top. Now, the bottom is never 0, right? We established that up here. Um, this numerator is always positive, and we're squaring it. Yeah, so I mean, we just got to focus on the numerator. Um, so that numerator, we've got minus 10x squared. Um, plus 70x, OK, um, minus 90. OK, so this is a quadratic, and it's opening downwards, right? We can, in fact, we can pull out the minus 10. So we have x squared minus 7x plus 9. OK. And it doesn't factor super nice. But we can definitely tell that it's a quadratic. It's opening downwards. Um, so these terms are initially increasing, right? They're initially increasing towards sort of that vertex in this quadratic. On, you know. So there's a few values of, of n at the beginning where we're on this side of the quadratic, and things are increasing. Once we hit that maximum, it's going to be decreasing, right? Um, so we expect that this is an eventually decreasing sequence. Uh, it's not decreasing from the beginning. It's increasing a bit at the start. Um, but it's eventually going to start decreasing, um, which is good enough. 
Okay, we're getting a little long here. There's one more still to go. What can we say about this last one? The factorial we can't really model with functions anymore. We could try looking at the difference. Um, this might be one where it makes sense to just start writing out terms. And initially, initially it seems like it's increasing, right? So we have 1 for n equals 1. And then we're going to have 4 over 2, so we have 2. And then we have 9 over 6. Oh, that's already actually a little bit smaller, right? Um, 16, 16 over 24, right? And then we have 25 over 120, and so on. Um, this is definitely decreasing, right? The factorial is going to grow much faster um, than the power function is. Um, so you have a decreasing sequence. If you wanted to really kind of nail it down, you could kind of look at this sort of difference again. You could say, okay, uh, what does the difference look like? n plus 1 minus dn. So you have n plus 1 squared over n plus 1 factorial minus n squared over n factorial. Um, actually, if you remember that n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times n factorial, right? It's defined recursively. Um, then what you have here is just n plus 1 over n factorial minus n squared over n factorial. Okay? And so it's minus n squared plus n plus 1 over, over n factorial. That is definitely going to be negative for large values of n, right? So once we pass here, it's definitely negative. We have a decreasing sequence.